New Hall Gaming. Game. Survive. Win. What is up the YouTube and welcome back to 100 Days of Diplomacy is not an option in Born to Chill. A much better on the eyes map, I must say. Simply this episode will go through 100 days, hopefully waves. I might go over slightly, maybe 102, 103 days, whatever it is, uh, to do a last wave. But the idea here is to survive as long as possible. If we don't die, we can do an extra 100 days on top, depending on how many likes we get. Let's go for 20. 20 likes or more, and we'll do a 100 to 200 days, if we survive. So, long story short, same as before, we need oh, yeah. to get the military option built as quick as possible i'm going to roam and uncover as much land as possible this map is different to what we are used to i no longer have the sea as a boundary to that left hand side there uh, of the map oh, of the screen sorry so i know two things that we need to do that i always like to do when starting and that is getting houses down to make sure we don't run out of people and rushing food as soon as possible so getting loads of people and food is key. As soon as that slight infrastructure is in, then you go for wood, which is what I'm doing ah. now. And then stone when we can get there. But for now, you just need the wood and um, uh, wooden food. I have to keep pushing the boundaries of what we can see with our military. You can see there is a hostile house there. These are more rebels, actual humans, not uh, wraiths and the nightmare stuff that was in the previous. But we have to keep pushing that boundary because the workers, whether they are in forestry or berry collecting, they will all wander into the realms of the enemy and be killed. They, of course, don't fight back, so you're left without a choice. So you must keep expanding the boundary visibly using the army that you have like I have here. I'm not going to huh? waste my time with the catapult simply because as you see it's far too slow. There. Now Fibonacci sequence is what I'm using. That was a fancy way of oh, saying yo. spiral. And I'm just going to go round and round and uncover what I can. You can see oh, there yeah. I have uncovered some stone and iron but that's sure. a way off yet. Also a large deposit of berries. So once I've found patches like that that are relevant, and specifically that many berries is definitely relevant, just uncover the area around it, make sure there's no bases or any enemies. Doing so means you can then get a couple of huts down, two, three, four of the berry collecting huts around there, and you won't lose any people. Shifting on to day three, and of course, still four days away from our first wave, we now get some of the wood collectors down. You can see over there on the left-hand side, that is a large horde of enemies. We really need to be careful aggroing that. But we got lucky on the right-hand side, and you can see there is loads of berry bushes. So that is certainly going to be a decent food source, although not permanent, uh, going forward. We need to get some granaries down as well because from experience we run out of space for food and as you can see at the top we already have. So you need to make sure to keep ahead of the curve and the curve is collecting resources. So the food, the wood, stone, iron, all of them to, to keep uh, the product coming in you need to make sure you don't run out of space. Soul crystals and gold coins. I'm not aware that there is a cap at all, so obviously them you're all right with, but they are much later as well. Now I do try and set up the settlement in, I don't know, some sort of, there is there is a plan behind it. The houses are always together because uh, later on you get a fountain that increases the amount of residents uh, and a tavern that reduces the amount of food the residents eat. Now, both of those buff buildings have a range. The fountain is extremely small. The tavern is pretty decent, actually. It's very large. But, obviously, the more houses you cram into any one area, the more benefits you can get with the least resources. Day five, I decided Research to pull complete. the trigger after uh, getting enough people that I hoped would be able to fight off the wave now if you don't push too quickly they don't all aggro it's a bit odd 
But as you can see there, I've aggroed, say, 10, 10 units, whatever that is. The other ones, knowing that they're disappearing to fight me and seeing them getting mauled, uh, still aren't engaging, I'm not sure. But that mechanic, I am going to take advantage of. So you can see there, we've wiped out those and then push forward uh, another five meters or so and slowly aggro into the group. Just got to watch out for that catapult. Now, I use the catapult to aggro so that as soon as they attack, my archers are already stationary and will immediately attack. Again, mentioned it on previous episodes. None of your units will fight when moving, oddly. Um, so they have to be stationary in order to aggro an enemy. So by doing it this way, the catapult will aggro. I'm going to use my spell here to bring some in just to push Research the boundary complete. get rid of this. Because it's just a, an endless, endless supply of enemies, it seems. Bringing in the archers, making sure they always have a decent range so that the melee guys are not just fighting by themselves. Melee guys with increased armor should be fighting at the front line, but the damage comes from the archers. And the cavalry, of course. Strategy's working. I'm just going to rinse and repeat. Go around, take in out these groups. Now I've seen what works. Oh, I can confidently just continue to go around. Up there, you can see an actual base camp. I'll probably push up there and take out that as well. But these fights aren't too traumatic. There is a chance you'll get a soul crystal from a building, not from the units. There is a research, of course, to get it from the units as well, I believe, but that's way off. So this is just a necessity that has to be done, but it's just a lot of walking more than anything. And on day seven, we have our first wave incoming directly oh, yeah. from the south or the left of the screen. Uh, you can see I'm just getting my guys to kind of... I don't know. I, I screwed up. I moved them a little bit late there. There was no need to. Using one of the spells there to bring in our knights, the Shadow Knight Archer guys, to stop them actually meleeing into my archers. Catapult there doing its work. And as expected, Wave 7, that was embarrassing for the enemy. They are gone. You can see I'm extending the houses quite significantly, pushing those out as much as possible. Granaries everywhere because we've got a lot of berries and fish coming in for now. That will calm down once the fish run out. Uh, the berries do run out, but they do take a while. It's a bit, but it is a slow process. The fish come in quite quickly and run out quite, quite quickly. Um, but we're rushing towards that obvious level three castle and therefore the farms. On day 11, I start to build an actual boundary. I'm not sure if boundary is the right word, but a perimeter is probably the better word, using walls, just to get some form of completion to where I want to start building defenses. The idea is that you want to be able to have enough space to live and build, but at the same time, you always need a good defense, and a good defense requires walls that are already placed with towers and defensive capabilities already in place. You're not going to be able to build that when they already attack. So what I'm going to try and do is build a decent sized boundary all the way around. Once that's done and I'm happy that the enemy is far enough away, I'll start then putting in the guard towers, uh, followed by the gates, etc. Then I can start trying to flood the walls, gates and towers with archers. Because unless you're going to use catapults, ballistas and trebuchets, archers are of course an option. Now the walls will always be archers, it can't be anything else. The towers have to be the large towers, uh, the massive I think they're called towers for the trebuchets and the catapults. You can see we have a nice rectangle building. They, them guys here are in my way, so I am going to do the norm and just push them back. By push them back, I mean wipe them out, Enemy kill everyone, and smash their base to pieces. Is what I mean by push them back. So I'm not pushing them anywhere, I'm just destroying them. Uh, then I'll get a nice, decent amount of area as well to use. You there's two iron mines here up at the top as well, they're critical. So I want to make sure they're in my bound. Easy. Jump into day 13, and of course, wave 2 about to crash 
into the northwest of the base. Larger, certainly larger wave. Though they do increase quite dramatically, actually. But you can see we do have a wall, although it is wooden. Uh, we have it lined with archers. So those ones on the right probably don't have the range to get here. And of course, soul shards. Stuck shoal. Shoal? No, soul. Soul crystals. To summon in some melee because I haven't got quite there yet. I've been throwing all of the food and energy and people into archers. Now shortly I will obviously jump through the waves to get 100 days into one shortish video. Um, I'm sure you don't want to see them one by one. But what I can do is just give you a brief overview of the waves coming through and in so that you can get an idea of the size of them building up to. Really from day 50 is uh, where I expect it to get really different from day 80 is where the game actually significantly increases the difficulty because we do have the skill turned on to do so. So from uh, wave 80 to wave, I believe it's 150, it significantly increases the difficulty ranking. With that wave out of the way, we now need to wait until day 20 for wave 3. So I'll come back there. Unless significantly changes in the base, uh, we'll come back to a few waves. Brought you back on day 17 because significance is the key here and that is the farm. The first farm has been placed and we are going for an additional one as well. These are critical for the future and the only way, well, as far as I'm aware, uh, the only way to actually progress efficiently. Um, berries, fish, etc. will not last, they never do, so this is your only option. Of course, there are two levels of farms. The first one we are putting down now, and the second one is upgradable using quite a lot of stone and iron in the third stage of the castle. To also add another significant upgrade you can see there is happening, and the walls are finally being upgraded to level two or stone. So, first level is wood, second level is stone, and then the third level is a lot of stone <laughs> and a lot bigger but yeah significant the the wooden walls do fall quite easily but the change between the first and second level is massive and in most cases you can quite easily stand a wave hitting them albeit you're not supposed to have the wave hitting the walls they're supposed to be fighting the melee in my opinion um, but you could use the walls uh, as a health pot uh, and then just hopefully use the archers and range stuff from behind the wall. So day 20 and wave 3 is coming in again. Thick and fast, strong and getting stronger. Using the same st strategy as normal for now anyway until we can afford to have resources. Our unit Protecting the perimeter. You can see I've got some towers in place for a lot of archers. Melee in place as well. Now this is a problem. What you can see on the screen is actually a bad way of doing it. The melee are holding back the pursuing wave, uh, but they're doing so out of range of the archers, which is stupid. So I have put the archers off the tower and brought them into range. Pushing the catapult back to make sure that the minimum range of the catapult is not met. Using the catapult to use its full range and full potential. Taking out up to seven or eight of the enemies in any one time. As long as it hits, which is usually pretty accurate. I mean, there you saw again. Easy, easy wave. Again, disappeared. Okay, so a bit of a wave marathon now to push this forward. Day 27 is wave 5. Pushing in on this north-west corner. Hopefully they continue to replicate the same areas. Although I do know that is not the case. And it does end up doing all four sides. As you can see now, we have massive towers in play. Which means we can put four catapults on them. They are a game changer, as you can see, wiping out, massacring the enemy, as expected. We do have two barracks in play now as well. You can see there's a lot more infrastructure in place. We'll take a look at that around day 50, I think. For now, we're going to stick with the waves. 
Wave six now, day 33. Same corner northwest. And the previous defense is still there, though I do have a tower now with, what is that, 25 crossbowmen as well. So they don't really stand a chance. They are going to pummel that one corner. I do not know why. Actually, I do. It's because I've got my melee guys out there doing exactly the job they are there for. So, yeah, I do know how to play this game a little bit. Look at the stats at the top, actually. You can see while we're just waiting for the way to get mauled and you can see purposely there I pulled back the melee defense to push them into the range of everything that I have. 300 out of 300 in terms of unit people, oh, 8 spear, storage for 500 food which is looking close and um, we've got plenty of storage for everything else. This wave is going to continue and this is what you usually get. The further we get on the longer these waves come in. When they come in single file or at least it's not single file but it is a thin file of a wave which does actually make it easier in my opinion to manage when they come in and stupid wide at the boundary that is where they get difficult now you can see they're walking past that whole city but the city doesn't care you see i've got guys all around now starting to build up that Population and food income where I can actually have spare people guarding all angles of the base. But for a situation like this, I can bring in the backups of the catapults. It looks like we don't need it because wave six is dealt with. Wave seven, day 40, and the first wave where we get multiple waves coming in two in fact though both coming in again from the you guessed it northwest now the northwest since last time has been significantly significantly upgraded with um, using the towers now the massive towers are actually built into the wall pushed it out ever so slightly as well to give us a better line so it's, it's a much better line along the wall which means that we have better range because pushing towers back behind the wall means you restrict the range. I did use the ray there, the level 1 spell that you've got with the first obelisk. Uh, I've got mass heal as well, which means I've got the second tier of obelisk built, but mass heal is not something we need at the minute. Still got our melee guys pushing or keeping that wave off the wall for now, but it doesn't look great for them at the minute. I have an additional batch of crossbowmen on the wall, or push just behind the wall, but I am going to have to use the ray to obliterate them. The ray just seem a bit overpowered. IMO, let me know your thoughts in the comments. It's... I don't know. I think it either should last not as long, or it should they are attacking do again. less damage and require upgrades. It just seemed there like it wiped out a lot of people for the amount of soldiers you have to spend on it. They are on the wall, but of course the wall is upgraded significantly and it's going to take them a long time to push that down. Meanwhile, we have an array of catapults making them go flat. And there's the end of it, so we know we've won yet another wave. On day 40, wave 7. For wave 8, day 47, they chose a different way for a attack. change. Southeast coming in hard. We do have defences there because, of course, I did plan for this. The whole entire perimeter has some sort of protection, though if you look at the minimap, you can see that the south west yes uh, or top left on the minimap currently is uh, not well defended because i've got a lot of buildings in the way again the ray coming in here because we don't have enough melee in place to stop them uh, oversight from me they are pummeling that wall quite hard it's a problem so i am going to pull in the guys that are out of range and then attack from the side in parallel with how the wave is coming in we can try and mitigate this a little bit. What we've got, 15 points in terms of the soul crystals, so we can do a lot of these rays. And just making sure that the guys on the wall there are taken out. The catapults are gonna have to do a lot more work though if we want to win, or the laser. 
So with seven waves out of the way, and we are now on day 50, and we're halfway through the 100 day challenge. Looking good so far, and infrastructure in the base is looking fabulous. Plenty of farms everywhere. Wood, 2,300. Stone and iron are low, but as you can see, I am dealing with that now. Uh, a, lo a lot of the stone mines ran dry, and of course, I didn't rebuild them. But we've been upgrading a lot. The house is now all at level 3, it looks like. 610 population, 187 villagers spare, which is huge. The food you can see fluctuating massively, though we have about 1700 storage availability. We're not struggling at the minute in any of those factors, and we have an army like you wouldn't believe. All corners of the base are protected to a degree. Obviously, you can see though that side there, which is south on the minimap, and it is left on the screen. It is a bit empty. Uh, that could maybe will bother us soon. Um, at the minute, I wasn't aware that it could spawn from every angle, per se. So you can see upgrading the gates as well. They are to allow our guys to get through as well. Just any amount of um, progression, really, for the people to move in and out. If I need them to do something, a gate is always a good idea. Building a wall to knock it down seems like a misnomer to me. Market running nicely, 23 coins currently, sending it out, selling a lot of that wood and getting the coins in. The OP units, which are the big massive juggernaut axe guys and stuff, they require gold coins to obviously be trained, but also a lot of the buildings uh, require coins to build as well. In the meantime, I am covering every single option for stone that I can. There is the option to get unlimited stone and iron at a later date, but we're not quite there yet. Of course, wood, the way to or the way to make that infinite is building foresters that keep planting more trees. You can see there, actually. That icon means that they can't access it. I don't know why that's showing, because as you can see, they can. So I'm going to ignore it. Always a good idea as well to put your storage facilities nearby so they don't have to walk too far to store said resource so what I try and do is build four or five of the, um, the mines or something and then I'll chuck down one there as well you can see there the houses are covered green taverns are doing their job reducing the amount of food everybody requires the city fountains both one and two increase the amount of people but as you can see the range is extremely small so we are going to have to wipe out a house here making a nice plot right smack in the middle it seems doing it this way you will get to, yeah, that, that patch there. What is that? 5, 5, and 14. So that's 14 houses affected by one fountain. I don't believe you can do any better than that, but please do let me know in the comments if you can. Then people walk around without houses will be fixed shortly because I'll just build more. Jumping ahead ever so slightly to day 52, and I'm chucking down even more houses. You can see I've put down a section. Uh, the fountain is in the middle of it then there's a tavern and then I'm going to try and replicate again on the other side exactly the same so you double it the again the, the taverns uh, field not field of view what's what would the word be range that will do uh, is quite good so yeah wave eight coming in two and a half minutes and of course with us being in fast mode that will be a bit quicker than two and a half minutes I would imagine it should be three times quicker. Or now. And they've actually picked the weakest part of the wall to attack. I think the amount of them will probably spill over. But it looks like that small wall there, as you can see, is being attacked first. So I will need to get some of my resources moved. Because I wasn't expecting them to hit here. I was expecting them to hit more uh, down from from that area. I've got an achievement there. I think actually um, there's been a gap between me playing the game by a day, so this was like the day after the original stuff was recorded. And there has been a patch where there are now a lot of achievements and stuff and a few changes to the game as well. 
I can do a video on the patch notes and stuff if anybody's interested, but for now I'm just playing along as normal. But they've added a lot of achievements in, and of course, most of the achievements that I should have, I don't have because I've already done it. So if you see some achievements like that one where it's the first time I've cast that ray, of course that's not the case because you've seen me cast many of those in the past. Our fortifications are now, under attack. we can see there is some coming around on that side as well. And as I expected, it is spilling over. So it's hitting that mountain and then spilling over. But the majority is going north of it or up to it. You can see it there actually wrapping around. The sort of mapping or the trajectory of what the actual guys do isn't the smartest. Which is probably a benefit to us, actually. Because if they attacked multiple ports, not ports, points at once, it would again. be a lot harder. Instead, they attack the same point, uh, but they use a lot of people. They did break through, but luckily with some melee, uh, well-trained melee, and they're in, coming in as we speak. They are keeping them at bay at the wall. The trebuchets as well, I've got a couple of those. They do a silly amount of damage compared to the catapults if they hit, of course. They are definitely a lot more powerful than the catapults. Research will also help firing uh, much larger projectiles, much larger uh, area of effects on the ground, and also some of them can be flaming also. Looks like this wave is beat. It's a bit messy, but nothing that we can't fix. Looks like maybe four walls need to be rebuilt and a few towers need to be... Maybe a bit more now that these walls are going to drop by the looks of it. Because again, the archers don't fire until they're stationary, which again is... So that's another wall down. I'm liking that one as well. We'll send the horses around and finish this up, but this wave is a win. So we can move on. Looking for... Uh, enemy attack. Yeah, you see, I got an achievement for fighting them off, and this was the, yes, that was sir. the eighth wave, not the first. But don't matter. So we'll see you again our, our around day 62. Okay, we are now here, day 62 coming in, and the counter is on the five-second timer. This one is no joke. Three waves coming in, two of which I haven't built any defenses enemy for because I'm an idiot. So, yeah, they'll be interesting, and here it comes. Look at the size of that. That's ridiculous. So I need to move these guys over. Of course, concentration on the army is to make the army attack your army, not anything else. Our troops are under attack. That wave is so large, I'm not going to stop them from coming in and decimating the farms, it looks like. I have plenty of catapults and trebuchets coming in as well as a defensive precaution, they but they are the so walls. slow. It's taken them what feels like two days, literally, uh, game time, obviously, uh, to get actually to the other side of the map. Now that is a significant amount of enemies, and at this point you would think Our that I'm going combat. to lose. Are we going to lose? I mean, you can probably f tell by the fact that you're not at the end of the video, it's unlikely, right, but we'll see. That top one there is just walking Rest straight up. into our base. Attack. If your storage facilities are destroyed, you lose all the resources. It doesn't leave it on the floor. It doesn't make the most sense, but it's fine. So protect your resources. Now again, you can see I am trying to get walls up, but there was no way I was going to get them up in time. It takes far too long. However, the enemy attacking the walls here at the bottom is wonderful for us. Because while they're knocking down the walls, they don't need to. Because why would you attack a wall when there is an open door? I do not know. So again, the enemy is a bit thick, but it's for our benefit, so I'm going to accept it. They're taking out the houses as well. Now, what I've established is if they get into your city, it will be a bit messy. You will have individual enemies attacking random things all the time. We have to concentrate on the horde. We have to concentrate on the raid itself. The majority of the people are still coming in, even though we are already struggling at this area, as you can see. Now, we do have plenty of support around. We've got all of the left-hand side there. You can see a lot of catapults doing their business and a trebuchet as well. The military that we have aren't following automatically, which is a bit bit odd, the AI of them. You'd expect them to continue to chase down the enemy, but they don't. I don't I don't understand that either. And there you can see an absolute mass of units that I've left and not moved, which was again my failure. 
cleaning it up uh, did work again it was messy so all I need to do really you can see the uh, siege weapons are annihilating them bringing in the units as well to distract them that are in the, the villages I've lost a lot of houses obviously but they could be rebuilt that's not the end of the world and we haven't lost the game so we can rebuild we have obviously until day 69 lol of course we do uh, to rebuild so on day 69 I'm going to say it again is where the shit may hit the fan again but we shall see in the meantime we want to get all the houses rebuilt the tavern the farms and the fountain I believe we lost yeah we definitely lost the fountain as well and the walls finished and if we can after that we need to get some attack. towers built so that we can lube up that edge of the map to be uh, a better defense we have the siege Whoa. weapons we just need somewhere for them Barely to be stationed and speaking of wave 69, here it is. Now, don't be fooled. It's coming in on that yeah. southwest corner on the minimap. Uh, we did get buildings. the build uh, the building done. You can see the wall is yeah. totally... That was a lie. Almost totally filled with archers. Ready. Behind the wall is a mass of siege engines. Yeah. And behind that is some melee units to try and use to control. Now, although it looked like Press one spot they were attacking, right. this wave is no joke. Just look at it. Hello. The amount of units coming in now is getting ridiculous, which is fun, actually. I'm enjoying it. Uh, the, the fact that they're so clustered is actually an advantage for all of our... What do you call them? Siege weapons. Because if you're going to hit something, you're going to probably hit 20 of them. The city is under I'm sending out the melee units to try and stop them from coming down this right side because there are no archers along the yeah. walls of that right side. So if I can keep them sort of in line the with the wall at this top, because of course I can't build any further out. Look at that. The sea of hell. That is a lot of units and they are constantly oh, coming and loading into the map. Another change that you've noticed as well is the red is where it's showing the units yeah. through items. So you can now see the units through the walls, you can see the units through the they trees, that's what the red is. Uh, that is a lot yeah. better actually, it makes it a lot easier to see what is attacking your walls and where they are. For the previous patch, which was the first sort of 50 days of this playthrough, um, that didn't do that. So it was a nice uh, change walls. to have midway. Now I expect these walls will fall likely. Um, unless the siege weapons can pull their fingers out sometime soon and they do something attacking about our it. Buildings. I don't have, or well I have one soul crystal which is of course not going to do anything. Perfect and time for a meteor or a laser. Attack. Now what I can do is bring all of the units like so from everywhere else on the map and try and get everything over here just to preempt them taking the wall out. The if they take the wall attack. down, break into the city, I'd rather them meet the rest of my artillery, siege weapons, than my houses again, because we only just about built those back up. I haven't done the farms yet, but it took a while. The wall itself took Dang. forever. And of course, I upgraded it to level three as well. You can see they've already broken through on the corner and they're breaking they're through even more. Oh, Trying to restrict them best I can. Again, luckily it's all in one place, so we do have that going for us. The Attacking from one angle attack. does make it easier to oh, micromanage. What can we do? Our buildings. The city is okay, under attack. so the wave itself wasted a lot of time you can see that the entire wall's gone they didn't need to do that as soon as there's a hole in the wall you'd think they'd rush through it they don't they've actually taken out the wall and as you can see up there in the top left hand corner they're continually continually using at least 50 people to take down a wall that's not relevant again although that's odd it's a benefit because that means that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing and actually attacking the useful stuff in the meantime, I am going to create as many units as I can, both from the lost ones and the ones that we can make anyway, and direct them towards that swarm that's now coming in once again to wipe out my house. We do have a lot of siege weapons in play. I don't think they're going to last too long. The 
we've learned something. I don't know what. I think what we've learned is that we've built the base too close to the edge. Maybe. They are attacking I say our we, it was me. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, as it stands, I'm pretty confident this is over now. The last few people are being wiped out and we're good. Yeah. We lost a couple of farms and maybe six houses and a giant wall. It could have been worse. It could have been better. Hopefully on wave 11, coming in day 77, attack. we will be better prepared. Maybe. So here we are at wave 12, day 77. We have the OP units now, or at least a few of them anyway. Uh, Food-wise, it's showing us flashing, but at the minute we're not struggling for it. I think we might be. People might be dying, and that's what's kind of counteracting that. Plenty of siege units though. They are attacking the north east corner, which, to be honest, the northeast northwest corners are the best defenders, so it's doing us an advantage, or giving us an advantage, should I say. I'm pretty sure that gate's not even shut, but they don't go through it, I don't know what that's about. On this top again. side, you can see melee there, holding them back, and then the archers taking them out before we get there. This left-hand gate is more uh, relying on the brick wall itself. Six soul shards available, soul crystals. Um, so that's not really enough to do much to, but you can see they are really hitting hard against that wall. The, th the third level wall is very strong though, so they are taking a while. We have, of course, Our troops are under attack. by this point, nearly completed the research as well. Um, haven't yet bothered to get the third level of obelisk to give us the meteor. Our troops are under Mainly because the soul crystal limit, it, it, it takes I think 10 for a meteor and obviously we're nowhere near that. So you can see I'm lucky and I'm weird to use these spells that I can use. And actually I'll use the laser to try and relieve a bit of pressure on this wall. While the melee units there are being swarmed up in the north on top of the screen there. This looks manic and crazy. It's not too difficult. Of course... This is the last wave before the difficulty increases, so the units will have increased health and damage from the next one because that's past day 80. Day 85 is where we'll have the 12th wave. Uh, no, 13th, sorry, 13th wave. Broken through there, or at least just taken out the gate, but that was expected. The melee units there keeping a cluster, but this one is still going. This is no joke in terms of unit quantity. Get those capsules there, making sure that none of the enemies are within its minimum range, so everybody is able to be squished by the boulder. You see that right on the edge of that minimum range is the nearest enemy. Keeping it like that is the most efficient way to use under the siege weapons. We're using a lot of rocks, and thank Christ we're not... Strangely though, if you saw, a lot, a couple of them attacks there were actually all in the same spot. That's a bit annoying. Because really you'd rather have it more spread out, I would say, to try and get more Our units are in squish for your book. Right inside there, that has now figured itself out. The last few there really are irrelevant. We'll get the uh, knights there on the horses to deal with those. The knights are really strong good units to have also a decent amount of speed they get faster as they move and of course if they are moving quicker when they attack i.e. charging uh, they do additional damage as well. that is the last part of there and there is no way the enemies can survive you can see the amount of firepower going down from them here's a gg and that is wave 12 dealt with So here we are, day 13, will it be unlucky? 85 the day currently, and that is over the 80, so that means that the difficulty has Our increased. Are and under I am attack. noticing it. We do have a lot of soul crystals though, because we have the soul crystal temple built. You're only allowed to build one of those, and it has to be built on the Battle of Meteor. Yeah, that is fantastic. Just delete. Now, the area that it covers is small, and that's a bit disappointing, but it is fun. However it is, it is expensive as well. As we have it, there are four incoming waves. All of the areas are somewhat defended, definitely upgraded, of course. 
We still have some normal people Our trying people to just walk attack. through. Yeah. There's the original wall. Much smaller wave than what we had previously. So that's going to get dealt with with no issues whatsoever. I can use the laser to... They are attacking again. I think it's actually called a ray. An astral ray or something like that. It's a ray, not a laser. But let's be honest. Ray, laser, astral. It's all light. Light. There's a laser. Yeah. It's in the acronym. So, yeah. So we're not doing too bad. The areas are well defended, as already predicted. Again. This bit on the right-hand side, not so good. So that needs some support. There is a trebuchet there on a tower. Uh, but the... Yeah, there you go. I fixed that. Our fortifications fixed are under attack. It's a very powerful tool, that is, for how many points it costs. I-M-O. But you can see as well that wave 14 will come on day 94. So we are really close now to getting to the end of this episode. That will mean that the wave after that will be after day 100. So I will probably show you the wave, but we won't see the wave. If you want to see the wave going after the day 100 where Our it really gets difficult, then we will need to like the video. And at 20 likes, I will, of course, do a new one for you. With the rest of it almost dealt with, this wave is now hitting, I don't know, it, it's hitting too thin. That's not going to really do much. I'm not worried at all. Uh, you can see the guys actually coming with wood and then turning around. That's quite funny. I bet that's making them jump. Yeah, there they go. Um, we're just going to wait for that to run out. I'm not going to waste the time as watching that because, why well, would we? We already know we're going to beat it. So let's have a look over at day 94 and see what is coming for us. Our troops are under and of attack. course with day 94 it didn't let us down now the waves were much thicker much more difficult to do you can see I already took out a small section there they got wiped out a bit too quick Our troops are uh, under using attack. my units they are significantly upgraded now another meteor coming into practically wow that was brutal basically wiped out at least a third of that entire Our attack and the Dark Knights that we get from the spells, I have many of them. Uh, they are fully upgraded as well, so they last a lot longer and do a lot more damage. They are doing their job oh, well. This wave's a bit weak, I'm not going to lie. I'm not that impressed with it. I will continue to use the laser you would expect. And what I got from the original one uh, was the oh, like boss type units, where you had the large rapes that used to bring people back to life. And the enemy catapults and the like. We don't really get any of that, and we are on wave 14, day 94. I expect more, to be honest. So, with the very last units there being dealt with, and there's still rocks being thrown at them, even though they're already dead. Uh, for good measure, we are now looking on day 55. Day 103 is wave 15, and of course that is past the 100 days. However, we will take a look at what is expected for us. But it'll have to be for the next one to see it. This has gone on for a lot longer than I expected. But for doing one of these 100 days, uh, it's twice as long as a normal episode. But I'm hoping oh, that that is okay for you guys. Let me know. I can split it down into two if you wish. Over here, you can see I've got my OP army. A crap ton of healers, some knights, some of the tin men and the OP axe thrower guys. This melee unit is no joke and can hold back many, many thousands of enemies should I need to. And that's what it's holding on that corner for because I can't really defend it very well. The northern side, which we're over here to the left hand side of the screen, is Boy, well defended all out all the way down. A few issues with the uh, graveyards being overflown. Overflown? That, that might not be the right word. Anyway, who cares? Research almost complete. You can see I've nearly completed every single part of the research. But we don't need necessarily the items as strictly as maybe we should. Jumping now to day 100 as it stands. Because that is the name of the episode of the video. And we have a nice structure in place. 1,276 units. 196 people free. The food is fluctuating like the clappers, but we are okay at this point. Resource-wise, just over a thousand wood, three thousand stone, and 137 and climbing drop-in uh, in terms of iron. No coins. 41 soul crystals for spells, which is huge. 
Um, and we're just going to sell as much of that rock as we can to get more coins to do more upgrades. Report. At this point, of course, we do have the unlimited um, things in place. So we get unlimited rock, which we need to use steel for, or iron. So to make unlimited stone, you use iron. To make unlimited iron, you use wood. And to make unlimited wood, you use foresters to plant more trees. What I'm trying to do is build four or so... Um, and then go from there. Now it is day 102 and the time is going fast, but you can see what is coming in on the wave 14 in two minutes time. But we aren't gonna see that on this episode. If you wanna see that, click like and we will get that for the next one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome complete. as always. Take care, goodbye.